Hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed looking at the tanks last time when we tried Meteor and the Hunter tank. As you can see, it's back to standard and that's probably the way it's gonna stay. But you never know, something might happen with those tanks. And I definitely want to try a paint job on one of them to try on the Meteor. Just for a laugh, something to do over winter. But this week, I can show you the tires. I ordered those and they've come along at last. Now what I've gone for are Shinko E270s, which are a copy of that sort of vintage Firestone motorcycle tire. So here's some pictures of those. As you can see, they're very sort of oldie style looking. I hope that's gonna work out. Obviously it's an oldie style looking bike. So I hope these are gonna be good. We're gonna have a look now. So let's get them off. Right, check it out. If you remember with the Meteor, I wasn't quite sure what was gonna happen. But once I had the tires, obviously, everything kind of developed from there. So I think it'll be the same with this, that once we see what the tires are doing, the rest of the bike will follow on from that. Hoping I got the right size. We got a 19 inch front and a 18 inch rear. it out. I know I said white walls, you're not daft, they are blue. I think uh, um, you clean that off afterwards just to stop grease getting on your white walls. Hopefully this will stay in focus for you. It's upside down. Look at that. That is a super vintagey looking white wall tire. So it should get fatter as it inflates. Yeah, more like that. Now one thing you will notice about these is they're very tall because they've got a hundred percent aspect ratio, which means they're as tall as they are wide. Now the original tire is a 190-19, which means it's a 90% aspect ratio originally, which means the height is 90% of the width. So not that far different, but they are bigger and I hope it's gonna fit and not fit under the mud guard. But I'm telling you what, they're going on. I don't care. I don't care what we have to do because these are gonna go on this motorbike. So, front. Bloody hell, it looks enormous. And the rear, which is an 18. Now the original is a 120-80. So the rear is, um, the height is 80% of the width. But again, this one's 100% of the width. Although, it's not as wide, it's 4.5 inch, just to completely mix, mix up all our measurements. There we go. Two super vintage white wall tires. 
Sorry, I'm just enjoying the focus on this new camera. Brilliant. Right. This thing looks so different. They look enormous. Can't get over how big they look. It's gonna look like a, a clown bike or something. Let's move you over a bit. I'm assuming that once the air is in them and they're pulled wider, they'll get uh, smaller in diameter overall. Because I was expecting them to be about 30 millimeters bigger overall. They look absolutely enormous, like some kiddie's toy or something. I know this is the right size, it's an 18. Hmm. So if you <laughs> use your imagination, there's the rear tire. And there's the front. <laughs> I don't know, it's just making me laugh. As if some cartoon characters gonna come riding in on it. Look at those white walls though. I don't even know if it's gonna be able to have a front mud guard. That's bizarre. We're gonna have to get those put on by my local shop, I think. But I wanna paint the wheels so I can't I can't do it very quickly. Right, let's move back a bit further. So if you squint your eyes and imagine this is what we're gonna have. Crikey. Well, what do we think about that? I think I'll have to prioritize getting the wheels off, getting those old tires chucked and painting them and getting these tires on just so I know that it'll fit. I think it will. It'll probably just be tight under the mudguard, but we can, we can adjust that. That's given me a lot to think about. I don't even know if it'll hit the swing arm or not. Because obviously there's a... The front of the swing arm is in there. I tell you what, if you have to cut the swing arm, we'll do it because I want these tires on and they're going on and I've bought them and it's too late to send them back. So it's going to happen. Right, let's drop the rear wheel out and just put that in the space just to get an idea. Yes. I've heard the wheels are very difficult to get out of these, so I've just used a block of wood underneath to uh, raise the level up a bit. So let's have a look. I haven't got the original toolkit, so I'll just bodge it for now. Obviously, that exhaust is more than scratched already. Oops. Still, I should take more care.
nut washer. Right, is this gonna fight me or not? Hmm, not. That's quite clean actually. Oh, I'm greased. All right, so there's gonna be spaces. Here it comes. Get the chain off the sprocket. Now this must be the problem people talk around about. Because obviously, with this lovely mud guard here, it doesn't want to come out, but I might be able to tilt it out. Let's have a look. Spacers. That was the other spacer. Oh uh, yeah, I can see why this would annoy people because this wheel does not want to um, come out. What about this way? Ah, there we go, so to the sprocket side. Still, that's not the way I would like to do it with a nice clean bike or a tidy bike. go. Filthy wheel is out. Filthy, filthy wheel. Right, bye bye. Is that brake colour perceived? No. Nice free brake caliper. Right, let's try that tire. Okay, 18 inch. Now, can we get the bloody thing in? Let's put the spindle in, and it'll hold that up. Oops. Right, is that in the middle of the wheel? That's closer to it, yeah. Right, let's have a look. Hey, hey, here we go. Classic 350 white walls. Might need to be a bit further forward. So, a bit hard to tell. Let's go back a bit further. It looks a bit like from that film Tron now, with that blue ring in the middle. what it's going to look like. And one at the front. That sounds good. So you have to squint your eyes a lot. That's I'll stick the filter on to help. 
Oh, it looks so old, doesn't it? I love it. It looks so old and friendly. Look at these happy little tires. There we go. I faked the front one in front, so the perspective is a bit off. But again, if you squint your eyes a bit. Oh, this can look so good. I was right to get the tires first, because that would have changed everything if I'd gone with something different. Oh, the seat's popped up. Don't worry about that. It's not meant to look like that. Right, okay, a lot to think about now. That's gonna look so vintagey. I'm really happy now, I'm really excited. Old school vintage is definitely, definitely the way to go now. Hmm, a good look around the internet now at some old style things and we'll come up with a concept, but I know it's gonna be making this look as old as possible. That's gonna be so much fun. That's gonna be so good looking. What do you think of those? Oh, I wanna try out so many colors on that. Oh, what to do? Right, let's have a think. But in the meantime, I know a lot of you have been asking and wondering, and I've been waiting until now, until I had all my thoughts in, in a row. What, what's this all about? Why, why get a bike like this and not just buy one? Because that would be far easier. Let's talk about that. There we go, check it out. Can't wait to get them on. I've had a good look on the internet for any bullets or Royal Enfields that have got these tires on. But I can't find any anywhere. Just those sort of custom bikes I showed you earlier. So I can't wait to see this. Though I've got to, I've got to paint the wheels and decide about colors and things. So um, it's all a bit of a chicken and egg, as they say. Now, I know quite a few of you are curious of what I spent for this, what I spent out, what I've paid for this bike. And with the help of these crude models, <laughs> it would, cause it would never be easy. With the help of these crude models, I ain't gonna show you. Now this stick represents what a brand new classic 350 Reborn Halcyon Black would cost in the UK. That's about four and a half thousand pounds, four thousand five hundred pounds on the road, ready to ride away. That's this red stick. Now, this green stick represents, not a crocodile, but what I could buy, probably a one year old Perfectly nice classic 354, maybe one with a few hundred miles or a couple of thousand miles, but otherwise as new, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So new, four and a half thousand, a year old used, maybe 3,200 at the moment retail, maybe a little less now it's coming to winter, but pretty much just over 3,000 pounds. So you're all this saving just for someone else having bought the new bike. And if they've paid a couple of hundred quid for the first service, you've kind of saved a couple of hundred quid as well, as long as they did the valves better than I do it. Now, what about this bike? Now this bike, this gets a bit complicated here. I'll cover this bit up. I paid 1,200 pounds, which is that little blue bit. So about a 
little less than a third of a cost of what it would be if it was all very nice and shiny and a lot less than and about a quarter see I'm not doing the maths I'm just <laughs> using a stick one two three so a new one would be nearly four times not quite four times three and a half times more expensive now I think if I wanted I could make this perfectly presentable and nice maybe not quite as nice as a lovely mint condition one but perf perfectly nice I think I could spend about 400 pounds and collect all the bits and fix some bits and bend some bits back so that much the blue bit and the green bit and I'd still be less than half the cost of buying a second hand one and about a third of the cost of buying a brand new one and that's great that's no that's fantastic that'd be a be happy riding around and but we both know that's not going to happen so where I think I want to be at is I'd like to spend that much extra so maybe another so maybe 800 pounds overall so 2,000 pounds in all so just over half what a lovely one would cost quite a bit less than half than a brand new one but it will have all the lovely things that I want these tires are 300 pounds for the pair no about 320 pounds for the pair these tires because they're imported though well, they still came in about a week and all the other all the other things I want to add and the paint finish and the doing whatever I want really and getting it exactly how I'd love to look at it as well as just the enjoyment of messing around with it like the meteor because if I'd taken that money on tires and everything and added it to one of these price points obviously I'd have spent quite a bit of money then and I would like to take my wife somewhere actually nice so that's kind of what the budget I've allocated Brand new, one year old and as good as new. And this. <laughs> you watch, when we get to the end, I'll have a stick this long with all the bits added on. But to be honest, these, these tires are kind of the only expensive thing I want to buy. The rest is just making it right and deciding on the paint finish. So hopefully, that will make sense and the sticks of reason will um, guide us to good decisions but having said all that all that about cost and price a classic 350 for this much money is really good it's really amazing obviously I know we're from all around the world from all different backgrounds and I know money is is different everywhere and value so I hope I'm not offending anyone when I say that that's affordable but the beautiful thing about motorcycling and Royal Enfields especially is that they're an absolutely attainable dream if you want it for a working person because even a new one the monthly payment pretty much it's probably less than we spend on cat food but I have a lot of cats but it's an attainable dream for something as beautiful as this or as beautiful as it will be or should have been because you know there's no way I'm ever going to buy a Ferrari or a Porsche or you know a Lamborghini it, it, you know those things that is so far beyond what's achievable but the Royal Enfields 
you know, you can have this. You can, you can have it. And it's rare to be able to make your dreams come true. But with these Royal Enfields. And that's what they do, really. I think that's why they're so popular for many of us. Is they really, they really bring something beautiful to us that often can be quite elusive elsewhere. So even that is awesome. That is more awesome. This hopefully will be awesome. <laughs> Poor little thing. But I'm convinced there will be a beautiful bike here. So next time, what can I make with these? Next time we will look at some images, I think, and we'll try and decide on a paint finish and a concept because I kind of need to set my direction on something to get started on this. But either way, we'll start ripping into it and taking this all apart because I've had it sat here so I can sort of pass by it while I'm working and think about things. But the time has come for action. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you can because YouTube tells me to say that. And we'll be back. <laughs>